I'm Al. I'm a technical producer here at LiveX. Hi, I'm Anna. I lead the coordinating producer team here at LiveX. And today we're going to be taking a look at the, uh, the Panasonic Kairos, an IT, IP-based video processing platform. What's super special about this, and we haven't really seen this before in LiveX, is that this is SMPTE 2110 based system. It's taking what we've normally done in video workflows from the SDI domain to now IP streams. Um, so everything that you're seeing up on the wall right now, those are all IP streams. Yeah, so they send us like the 1RU Kairos Core, which is the KC100 model, which is the, like the brains of the whole operation. We got this beautiful hardware here. Because it's really an ecosystem. It's an end-to-end -end production mm -hmm. workflow in a lot of ways. And this panel is dope. This is sweet. It's fully customizable. On this first crossbar, I have my program, my A channel, and on my on the bottom crossbar, I have B, which is my preview. So right now, I have um, in one and program and in two and preview. This is dynamically set so that you see exactly what's in each layer on the surface, and it, and it happens dynamically. Meaning that as soon as I take the four box into program, this section lights up with all the sources I have available to punch into those boxes. And that's called smart delegation. So I can see up here that if I push one of the top line, it controls the, in the four left. box, the bottom left. Yeah, cool. So on this section of the panel, we have all of our transitions and these are selectable for your, your crossbar. I'm actually controlling on the four box the- The layers. The layer for the background, so. I guess in preview on the background for the four box, it's in black. But then I can go specifically, so top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Looks like bottom right's out. I can just punch that back in. It totally breaks the mold of what an ME does. The biggest problem that we run into with software is it's based on um, Windows, right? It's based on an OS that exists on top Whereas this is a piece, this is a one or use server that's been specifically designed with only running Kairos and that's it. It's hmm. not doing anything else. This is running Linux, but this is programmed specifically to do just Kairos. You know, it's funny because a lot of it seems to actually happen in the switcher software. I can, I can pre-build in my software, like I can go over to my mixer scenes and I can work in a more like Photoshop based environment. I can put transform and bring in a corner, or, like move it around or rotate it. It's doing this on the fly too, as you can probably see here. This system can do one frame of latency, processing latency between input to output. Awesome. So the input streams that we're putting in the system only takes them a frame to do all the processes that we've added on before it comes out the other side. There's certainly a lot to discover when it comes to where can we fit something like this into our master control room, especially as we're starting to build more and more studios. Totally, it's a question we have to ask ourselves every single day. It's all about resource allocation, particularly in a time where everything for us right now is master control room based because we can't go into the field like we normally do, right? When you're in the field, you go, you rent your cameras, you get your truck, whatever it is you need to do, the resources exist in the environment, right? So every day we have conversations about resource allocation and what's available, how many projects can we deliver successfully at one given time? How do yeah. we scale? How, how do things how grow? How quickly can we change over? Like at least right. in an IP environment, like I know I can visually track everything that's happening. You need to be able to navigate dynamically and be able to flip from one to another and say, hey, I, can have, I have Cairo system A, B, and C. Okay, I'm gonna go over and use C, but I built my show on A. I can just load up that file, it's gonna bring in all the things, all the I.O. that I'd, I asked for it on A, and it'll be there. But we're also talking about a machine, because it's software-based, this can contain the show, right? It can contain your graphic elements, and your settings, and your output, and your inputs, right? So you sit down, there's two file, kinds of files you can upload, the environment file and the show file, right? Your mm -hmm. environment file is your I.O. and your spec, and then you have your show file, which and is gonna- And your Oh yeah. 
That's even true. multi-views. The macros are going to be included in your show file. Uh, like how you laid out your switcher is going to be laid out in your show file. Your control surface, your shortcuts, macros, mm. your graphic elements, any assets that you uploaded to go with it. Your final yeah. destination exists outside of that, which I actually kind of prefer. I'd rather switch and control on one thing and encode and stream and distribute somewhere else. Like that actually seems really nice and clean to me. I think that it needs to be looked at for people who are building out multiple production environments within one space, mm -hmm. right? If I was going to outfit a warehouse in New York City with three different production spaces, this would be great because it allows those production spaces to work together uh, without laying so much cable in the ground. It's simplified infrastructure in a way. The biggest selling point I remember from talking to the folks at Panasonic is that this is supposed to be mid-market. And if I was able to just drop a box and tie all my PTZs in and have them all networked and be able to control all the things from one joystick, be able to switch my show, and not have to worry about any of that stuff, and have it all tied into a system that's robust and it's future-proofed. Yeah, Houses of Worship I actually think are actually a good example because almost every House of Worship you're going to deal with some level of iMag and display mapping. Mm -hmm. You're going to deal with overlays because you have to drive lyrics and graphic elements fairly heavily. Mm -hmm. And there's generally multiple production spaces within the venue yep. as well. Being able to network it all together. And then usually you have remote viewing sites as well within the same building. I also see a lot of potential for corporate buildings, right? If yep. I'm a corporation, there's IMAG, there's multiple production spaces. They all have to talk to each other, right? An IP workflow actually really makes sense because the infrastructure becomes so big. The cool thing is that this... SMPTE 2110, is what, which, which is the ecosystem that we're talking about here, still runs on single-mode fiber. So the things that we have already in our gear cove, we can still use that for this. We could drive VPN tunnels to remote into the Kairos. Say somebody's at home, they need to run graphics or need to run playback off Kairos, and they can, just, they can do that from the comfort of their own home if they see the multi-view. And they would do that over VPN. And they would have to do that over VPN. So. I'm super excited to see where this goes in the industry. Al, any final thoughts? I mean, SMPTE 2110 is the wave of the future, and having heard a lot about it over the last couple of years and finally seeing a real-life manifestation, this has been incredible. Thank you very much to Panasonic for getting us, giving us a chance to check out the Cairo system, and thank you for watching this episode of Hardware Junkies, and we'll see you guys on the next one.